Hello, it's this is Louis Lelane, and today I was going to show you, talk to you about uh, these marketing notes reveal why your business has more in common with an escort service than, than you think it does. And these are full frontal notes that address small business marketing strategies that Dan Kennedy uncovered while he's interviewing, you know, the infamous Mayflower Madam, Sydney Biddle Barrows. Now, most business owners, they, they think that the, the falsely, I should say, that the core product or service is the most important thing, but more often than not, it's, it's far from the top of the list. Now, the relationship between the business owner and client is much more important in many cases. Certainly, the benefit to the end user is, is far more important to them than whatever your product or service is. They don't buy things. They buy feelings. So they don't care how you get them to those feelings. They care what they, they're getting out of it. And so for a graphic example of this, consider that an escort service would have, you know, young ladies out for hours in an evening, but these escorts are actually on, ended up only having about seven minutes of sex. And so here's the kicker. Now, everything else that happened you know, before those seven minutes, even after those seven minutes, is it's just as important or more important than the sex. Otherwise, people will just come up and say, hey, can I have, you know, I need uh, eight minutes, you know, and whatever, like, like a prepaid phone card kind of deal. And so the key to, to making all of that possible, though, for people, uh, making, you know, creating great experiences for customers is you got to know who they are. So in Sydney's business, she mentions that they had detailed cards on all of their clients. So this included how old they were, where they were from, what they did for a living, what type of young lady the, the guy was looking for, what his particular interests were, you know, for example, golf, sailing, travel. And these cards were pulled out when doing any kind of sales or marketing to that client so that everything had a, a personalized touch. Also, one thing she talked about, you know, in, in, the, in the interview was that the idea that um, this stuff, they, they did that um, also to where they could give, they could brief the woman that they were sending out to him so that she would know what kind of, where, where to venture, what kind of ideas to talk with them about because people naturally find it easy to talk about passions that they have more so than talking about generic stuff. And so... Knowing your customer is extremely important. Now, she also hammers the the importance of image, and it's absolutely crucial in any business. So you have to look the part and consider the impression that, that you're making with with everything you do. So consider this: you, you pull out, you know, you're doing, you're going to ink a deal with somebody, and you and it's a big deal. You know, it's a big consulting project that you're you're setting up, and you pull out your your piece of shit big pen, you know, and maybe it's even, maybe you bite the tip of it, you know, so the ends all chomp down, and that's not something that it's not something the client's ever just going to be able to sit there and describe to you, but it's something they're going to feel immediately, and it creates and and leads to a negative impression of you in their head, and they're not going to come out and say that, but it's all about what kind of feelings you create in people with image, and so. Services, they have packaging just as physical products do. Okay, so in the above instance, you'd want to have the pen, the pen that goes with the part. You'd want to invest $50 in a kick-ass pen. So when you put that out, somebody can kind of feel relieved. Okay, yeah, I'm dealing with the pro. And it matches, so it matches your suit, matches, you know... <laughs> The briefcase, it matches the computer, then whatever else, whatever other uh, accessories you bring with you to the table and give the, to create this impression with somebody. And so it may not be like a box, like a product comes in, but your presentation and your choreography and all the little details of your service are the packaging. So, an example from Sydney's escort business. Now, if you're selling a client on a, a certain woman being the girl next door kind of look, then she wouldn't have that girl show up with a, a lot of makeup on in a sleek Versace dress. But 
is she selling the image of a model that you're getting a model then she would and so it's all about presenting and wrapping and it, you could do that with that same woman okay so it's all about presenting and wrapping the package in a way that allows you to manage the and meet the the client's expectations you want them to have and another thing she pointed out is you want them to have she wanted her clients to have a, as good an impression of you as they're leaving is when they first came in so that means you know after the women you know have the wrestling match with the guy the girl is instructed to go into the bathroom and put herself back together so that she looks just as stunning now as when she showed up and it's all part of packaging and impression you leave somebody with now here's another you know subtle yet powerful example now when the girl would show up to the client's door she was instructed to stand back you know from the door while he when he opened it and because it you know if you're standing re real close all he gets to see is her her face you know that's all you have to focus you, you it's when somebody's close to you you're not taking a, a top to bottom you know review you're not doing a top to review of, of somebody's body but if they're away you can see you can scan real quick and so in her fur you know and and so if her face wasn't what he was looking for then instantly he's got this unconscious bad impression however if she stood back when he opened a the door then he could see the whole package you know there would be more for him to appreciate and if there's voluptuousness in there then th that that's all working for you and the lesson to take from this would be obvious but if it's not you know for a salesperson it's about choreographing uh, choreographing <laughs> I'm like losing my tongue here choreographing your entrance and your exit from a presentation or a sales meeting so and if for a chiropractor it's about choreographing the procedure of bringing a client a patient you know a client in to see you and presenting the report of report of findings to them it's all this process that helps them appreciate and and know that they're dealing with the pro and so if you want to see this post in its entirety go ahead and mosey on over to here and see it and uh, you'll be able to have that and there's a whole nother part there's going to be a part two of it so make sure and check it out and uh, i'll be talking to you later uh, this is lewis lane out goodbye yo 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 this is lewis lane over at uh, minortakingnerd.com and uh, I'm here to share with you part two of two of the marketing notes to reveal why your business has more in common with an escort service than you think it does. And these are the, the full frontal notes that address small business marketing strategies that Dan Kennedy uncovered while he's interviewing you know, the infamous Mayflower Madam Sidney Biddle Barrows. Now, we go here and... These are these are stealth secrets from you know the billion dollar sex industry, and uh, one of the tactics that salespeople and marketers can and should use to establish trust more quickly is the damage of emission. And this is a process where you're you're going ahead and you're you're admitting that no product or service is perfect, including yours. And you, you point out a small flaw in what you do before highlighting or during highlighting all the wonderful benefits of what you do. Now, it makes you doing so, it, it makes you much more believable and hence establishes lots of trust very quickly. And so here's exactly what Sydney has to say about how she used this in her escort service and I'm asking you to look for all the direct correlations where you can connect this to what you do and she says okay well you know I think the, the number one thing that clients want to know is that you want to satisfy them that you're not trying to push what you have onto them that you really you know you genuinely care about what they're looking for which is what you really should be doing you know so we made a, you know, they made it a point. They, we really made it a point. She says that, you know, to ask, well, you know, what type of young lady are you looking for? You know, what is what is the most important thing to you? And what this does is it it, it creates this feeling that that you're going to 
that you're going about custom tailoring whatever it is you're providing to their wants, to their desires, to their needs. Now, if you can't fulfill all their wants, their desires, their needs, but you're real honest with them up front, you say, you know what, I can do A, I can do B, but I can't do C. Or you say, you know, which is more important to you, you know, A, B, or C. And you let them choose which is which is less important. And then if you don't have that or if you can't deliver what it is that they want, for example, she would tell them, you know, I'm really sorry. I just don't have someone of that description working tonight. However, on Thursday, because the girls gave them gave her schedule, uh, I have a young lady named Marjorie who is just what you're looking for. And are you going to be around Thursday? And they said, well, no, I'm not. She said, well, you know, I'll tell you what. But the next time you're in town, why don't you call me a week ahead and you can pre-book that, and in that way, I'll make sure Marjorie's working on that night that you're going to be here. You know, but I can, t she said, but I can tell you something, you know, even though Marjorie wasn't available that night, usually, but not always, the guy would book somebody else. It wasn't necessarily really what he was looking for, but at least he knew what he was getting. You know, he knew that we knew what he wanted and that we were planning to get it to him next time. And so he could have exactly what he wanted. But in the same light, he also knew that he wasn't going to ask for, you know, petite, you know, Asian, you know, mid-twenties and then have some black woman show up, you know, that was, let's say, voluptuous, you know, there was, you know, whatever the term is for a woman that's plus size, you know. And so... You need to get this presentation of your, your, your damaging admission down. You need to get it right. And when you're creating sales scripts, when you're crafting the way that you present or that you ask questions, it's, it's extremely important that you perform it yourself in the wild. You know, rather than just sitting down and typing it out and creating it and assuming that you'll know how it's going to flow. You can't, and in the same light, you can't have somebody working for you and do that, type it out, hand it to them, and then listen to them on the phone doing it. Unless you have the, the, pro, the plug-in on the phone where you can listen to what the other person is saying also. You've got to be able to hear. You're gonna, because if you don't do that, you're going well, to miss the hesitation of the prospect. You'll miss the reactions. You'll miss the response. There's all these subtle nuances that you pick up on if you will feel into the other person on the other line, on the other end of the, 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 the process. And that's something you don't get if you just hand this off. So you've got to get your hands dirty, and you've got to actually participate in the script. Now, here's another very powerful distinction. Now, you never tell people outright that they'll get the best possible outcome of with your product or service. Instead, you'd say, you know what, in the best case scenario, you're going to be feeling great in, in one week. You know, However, there's a lot of people that it takes two or three weeks for them to feel better. And when you do this, people will want to say to themselves, well... Fuck that! I'm gonna be in the best. I'm a best case scenario because they, most people believe that they think they're above average, you know, that they're somehow favored. And if it doesn't end up happening, they'll always be able to remember that you were a straight shooter with them. You know, you warned them, you know, ahead, and so you won't have violated their trust by making this outlandish claim that didn't show up, no matter if it was their fault or not. Now, to go see this post in its entirety and be able to have the link to part one of these notes, you want to make sure and go to this link that I'm showing you. And uh, go check it out. There are outstanding notes. And there is there's a shit ton more videos. Or, and, and, uh, not videos, I mean uh, articles, posts, all that related to Dan Kennedy, marketing, all kinds of other stuff. You can go check it out at the site, my, mynoturkeynerd.com. And... Uh, I hope you guys have a great day. I hope you found some value in this. And I'll talk to you again soon. Goodbye.